Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about The Wilds Season 2, Episode 8, The Exodus. So this is basically going to be the Season 2 finale, rundown, review type thing. I want to Exodus from this entire show. I cannot believe the directions they went in this show and the lack of screen time the girls have gotten. Like seriously, if you go by each episode, for the most part, in all eight episodes, maybe there's one that has the equal amount of screen time. There's one where the girls get more screen time, but every other episode, the guys get more screen time. Now this is common because let's face it, when they introduce the guys in the show, you have to get to know the guys. And, but, and that took away from the girls. And that's something a lot of fans was fearing. And we found that out firsthand and everything. Now, here's the thing. Like, not everything with the guys was completely bad. There were some scenes that were pretty cool and everything. But the guys should have gotten their own season first and then if they was lucky enough to get a third was it what they should do they should have put both seasons out at the same time um season two with the girls um everything that happened on the island for those 20 days and then everything with those guys for the 34 days or they should have combined both shows have eight with the girls eight with the guys but here's the thing there's some guys in this that never really truly got their whole interview thing. There are guys who really haven't even got their whole backstory thing. And the only thing we know about them is just what we see on the island. Like Josh, he's never really gotten his interview thing truly. Neither did Henry and neither did um, Seth. And to tell you the truth, ne um, Karen never really got his either. Bo never got to express how he feels. We only got to see them in flashbacks and either other people's solo episodes or like stuff on the island. And so that robs us from the guys. So if this was supposed to focus more on the guys, why didn't it focus on what um them and let us like them a little bit more? Well, except for Seth, of course. <laughs> I'm still not over the whole thing, what he did, how they allowed to show that on the show and how they wanted you to sympathize with him. Only for when he hurts a female, then you're supposed to hate him and everything. Also, this big reveal of what Raphael did, like put him in handcuffs and everything. They kept trying to build around this giant mystery of what happened in those missing 15 days that the team was unable to spy on them. And then when we find out, it's literally just like Seth sexually assaulting one of the boys on like the island and them like banishing him and then for them to forgive him and then for him to come back for them to banish him again. And of course, the whole him assaulting Alex thing. And it's just kind of like, that's your big mystery? Your big mystery, listen to me, your big mystery was another boy sexually assaulting another boy because he is mentally disturbed because his mommy left him and his girlfriend cheated on him. That's your big stinking mystery, sexual assault. Don't give me this whole, oh, you're reading too much into this. The showrunner doesn't hate me. Yes, she does. You can clearly tell that from the first season if you closely pay attention. For anybody, anybody, if you are like a female or male or whatever, and you're all like, you know, um, all for like, you know, women getting their justice for when they're sexually assaulted, guys getting justice for sexually assaulted. Um, if you're all for like how you hate how women are treated in TV shows back in the day, and you're totally okay with a teenage boy getting sexually assaulted, that just came out of nowhere. Nothing built up to that. Nothing built up to that. If you're okay with that, if you're okay with how the guys have been like treated as being idiots. Not one of them ever said, hey, anybody got a cell phone? The girls did that in the first season. Them sleeping on a cliff instead of sleeping on the side of the cliff, not on top of it, but on the side of it. And some of the other dumb bonehead decisions that the guys have made this season. If you're totally okay with that, like, well, it's fine. You are a hypocrite. You are two-faced and everything. 
And it's just like, it's not okay when they do it with females. It's not okay when they do it with the guys. I don't like how they treated females in TV shows back in the day. It was totally disgusting. And I get why they treat men the way they do now on TV, but this is supposed to be a teaching lesson. You are supposed to teach girls to be strong and little boys not to do bad stuff uh, and, and disgusting things. It's not a teaching lesson when it's completely a one-sided view and everything. And that's what a lot of TV shows, modern day TV shows and movies are missing. They, they forget that. They just go one way and that's it. Now I will say the writing in this season has been very sloppy, especially in this last episode. I do not like this last episode. This last episode, um, makes a lot of stuff that happened in season one meaningless now there's no point to the stuff that happened in season one all of the emotional stuff all the suspense and thriller just washed out the freaking door with this last episode and a lot of it had to do with fan service especially with that of martha and somewhat that of nora Season one built up this amazing, amazing suspense. Oh, what the heck happened to Martha and Nora? Because we never saw them in the present day during the interview stuff. This led many people to believe something bad happened to them. And you know what that something bad is? Death. Were they murdered? Did they die of like an illness? Did they die of hydration? Did they drown? What the world happened to them? And for the most part with Nora, we still kind of don't know. We know she disappeared at the end of the last season. And we never saw her in the beginning of the first episode when all the girls were trying to get to Rachel with the whole bit arm thing with the shark. She just disappeared. They didn't even see her disappear. She just disappeared. We, after they said that, I knew, I knew in my heart that she was going to be fine. She was going to be okay. Cause she is the mole and everything. And so like, so she probably like went on the other side of the island, went to her hideout place, probably went in that bunker, probably, um, uh, went on a boat, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I knew she was going to be fine and it was revealed. She is okay. She's looking on the cameras and everything at like her sister and the other girls. And she's sad with a tear coming out of her eye when she sees her sister. So, but still, what is the deal with her? Is she good? Is she evil? Is she being like blackmailed? Like what exactly is going on? We don't know. We don't even know fully how Gretchen um, convinced her to be a mole and everything. We get a little idea because you know the thing about Nora she was a misunderstood good girl she um looked up to her sister when her sister didn't like her boyfriend she dumped her boyfriend and he did nothing wrong and so then he died and then she wanted the guy who accidentally murdered him to know how much that her boyfriend meant to her by showing pictures of um, him and talking about him. She wanted the, the, the killer to be feeling guilty. We find out that that was Gretchen's son, DJ and everything. And then somehow Gretchen manipulated her into working for her. And she literally turned her back on the girls and put Leah in that pit, but she didn't kill or hurt Leah. She just put her in like a safe, a safe place. But it's like, why? What is the real thing going on with Nora? And we truly and honest to God still to this day do not know. As for Martha, Martha is, was like the sweetest girl on the show. And she's like one of my all time favorite characters and stuff next to Dot. Dot is my favorite because Dot is just so gun ho and can do almost anything. But, you know, I really love the sweetness and the innocence of that of Martha. And it's sad she had her innocence taken away and she kept quiet, allowing this monster to keep preying on little girl. It was so sad, so tragic. Then it was kind of like, what the heck happened to her in like, you know, the present? We didn't know there was suspense if this show really wanted to be thought provoking if it really wanted to be dramatic if it really wanted to be thrilling they should have did it they should have just gotten rid of martha and let that be the biggest oh my god moment kind of like sophia in the second season of the walking dead that broke people's hearts it broke the crap out of my heart and that's what they should have did with Martha. But since fans really like her, and since the cast and crew really like her, 
Oh, she is totally fine. In fact, see, after killing those like baby rabbits, she went in a catatonic state and she never moved after that. And then when the girls were rescued, she was like fine. She reunited with Tony and everything and she's 100% okay. That takes out all that was built up in that season one finale, just went right completely out the door, went completely out the door. This show no longer has stakes. And when a show no longer has stakes that is built, then what the heck is the point of season three? I don't even want to come back for season three. In fact, tell you the truth, after how dismal this season was, I am not coming back for season three. I might hate new Star Trek and everything, but I have to hope that one day it will get better. That's why I keep watching. I'm done with this show. See, with Star Trek, I've had like over 30 something years of watching Star Trek. I've only had two of watching this show and I'm done. I will say rest in peace to that the first season because it was great. There were some things about it I didn't like, but it was still great. But I am done with this show. And I will never call myself a fan of this show again. And I will not watch season three if it gets renewed. And chances are it will. And I'm not the only person who's upset about season two. There are like reviewers like online and social media. There are people online like Twitter and stuff. There's the people who have mixed feelings about this season because it's very mixed. Pretty much the whole consensus is the guys were just like um, not done right. And the girls, everything with the girls was like awesome. But the girls had so little screen time, you sunk your teeth into it, but it, it, it kept slipping and falling out your mouth. <laughs> like you'll bite onto it, but it would literally just fall out your mouth. And that's how it really feels and stuff. And so the big shock of like the Shelby in last season was why is she on crutches and why is, she, is her head shaving? And she looked so psychotic and everything, like psychotic and everything from mom last season. Well, we find out why she shaved her head and it's the dumbest reason why. She broke up with her girlfriend. See, she's a closeted. I don't even know if she's really a lesbian. I still think she's bi. She really did care for her boyfriend, or maybe she would just bearded him. So maybe she's bi, maybe she's a lesbian, I don't really know. But she's LGBT, so let's just put it like that. And she's closeted. And her family hates gay people. She knows that when she goes back home, she'll never get to live the lifestyle she did on that island, having a girlfriend, this and that. Unless, of course, you move away. A couple more years, you turn 18, you leave. Ooh, but so so she prevented getting saved on the island and doomed everybody for a couple more days. Then when she broke up with her girlfriend because Tony blamed her for what happened to Martha, she decided, oh, I'm so upset. I'll never get to like date a girl again. I'll never get to get married to a girl. She's acting like her teenage life is the rest of her life. So she decides she's going to shave her head. Just you no, know, first she cuts her hair and she cuts her hair with scissors and stuff like that. So that well, that's how she went bald and everything. As for like her leg, Fatten finds her and shows her Nora journal. So everything Nora's been drawing there, I think, was actually a map. So they go to each spot looking for things, but they see a lightning bolt. They don't have a chance to get to that. And so they buy the tree. And then all of a sudden, the most convenient thing happened. The literal most convenient thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> plot armor happens they pray one of them looks up and sees the cell phone in the tree it's north cell phone just so happens to be there so shelby climbs it and um, surprise surprise she slips and falls and twists her ankle that's why she's on crutches fatten climbs up it and gets like the phone and everything now there's an odd sense. so that's how she hurt herself so at least they explained that um I don't know if it was really a huge payoff. I would have preferred it if the girls went kind of crazy and attacked each other and that's how she broke her legs. I would have preferred that because it would have been more action packed that way. But there's something interesting that happened with Shelby. In the beginning of the episode, she hallucinated. Well, more like a daydream. Um, I thought it was real. I thought this has 
flash forward many years and she's singing in a bar her hair is still cut and there she sees an adult version of tony and tony's just smiling they're talking reuniting haven't seen each other in many years and then all of a sudden when she's in her dressing room in comes gretchen dressed in a black trench coat and shades i didn't think nothing of it. i just thought okay maybe she's hiding out because you know they ratted her out and stuff and then she shows some gummy bears one's pink one's blue and it's like the whole matrix thing i don't get that <laughs> i don't get that and then she wakes up I, I still don't get that the gummy bears isn't her thing it's josh's thing which brings me to him later on in this episode so Dot has barely been in this entire episode and has barely done anything. She grieves over her dad and that's basically about it. I think she was probably filming a movie. That's probably why she wasn't in it. So I'm very disappointed there wasn't that much Dot. And because Dot was a very cool character and everything. So after Fatten and um, Shelby get like the cell phone, they're starting to figure things out. They decide they're going to keep that a secret why i have no real true idea um they don't want to tell the other girl especially rachel because she might freak out and since leah's a little cuckoo crazy right now they don't really want to tell her that hey she's right and but it's weird the fact that they don't want to tell nobody and this explains now how shelby knew in the season one like um interview stuff Leah was interesting in this episode every time she hallucinated with ben fold I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and that's how you do mental illness and everything. She went back stir crazy <laughs> and everything. Thought she had on a dress, swam out to a rock, started like, you know, sitting down as he's playing piano and just talking to her. It was just like the most hilarious thing. But he gave her some advice. He gave her the advice. And this is the part that I think is kind of dumb. He told her, people think you're crazy. Make them believe it and use it to your advantage why because now we see what happens in a monologue i think this monologue completely just took away everything from season one with her character it was cool to see her freak out a lot in the interview stuff and having her be sedated and all this other stuff and it shows that she's still crazy and one of the cool things is that she's crazy but she is the one who literally figured out the whole nora thing which made her go bonkers in the interview stuff and so and then when she found out that there was boys on the island, which is funny because they tried to recreate that scene, but not really. You can tell those aren't the same guys in the same clothes. And, but anyway, so she found things out and it's kind of like, whoa, she's going to be the one to bring down this thing kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And so, but how exactly is she going to do that? But it was cool seeing her be so crazy in the first season in the interview stuff. Now we know she was just playing around and everything she pretended to be crazy to get sedated so she could conveniently put her hand down in that counselor's dude pocket and pull out his key his car key and that's how she's been able to roam around all around and got inside Raphael's room and I'm just like really girl you that good you that good of a spy like come on now come on now come freaking on now that's a little too spy like ish you know, like, I don't want to see a bunch of teenagers take down a bunch of adults um, physically. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure they have guns from what I saw last season and stuff. And also, it's a full staff. So, where is everybody at now and everything? Now, as for Gretchen, I thought for sure Gretchen was going to, like, be caught. Like, you know what I'm saying? I thought her numbers up. Because even if she does succeed and do what she wants to do, because she is really the only female villain in this whole show um the real monster but she has a goal in mind to show that females are superior to men so in the eyes of some people that's gonna redeem her and stuff but my thing is how in the world does she think she's gonna get away with all this she literally kidnapped two sets of teenagers people have died as a result of this and she, she literally kidnapped teenagers and everything took them across state lines and across the country and kidnapped them and then she they, they basically was in torture for 50 days and 34 days how in the world is she gonna get away with this and not go to jail but she literally thinks she's gonna get away scot clean when she shows her work to the whole world and everything that girls are superior because the showrunner hates men and so 
I never understood that, but I thought for sure she was going to get caught because Leah, for some stupid reason, contacted Ian and everything. And why would she contact him and not the police, not her parents, not nobody else? And so, like, Ian goes to DJ, and I thought, okay, fine, they're going to rat him out. But Gretchen is always three steps ahead. DJ caved and told his mommy and everything. So when Leah thinks she was setting, um... Gretchen up what she was at first Gretchen set her up and so the power goes out we see Ian go to the FBI and then everybody's door unlocks and they get out so the girls finally get to meet the guys and everything so they all head into a room and it's look, it looks like a prom room I'm just like what the world's going on we see like um Martha and Shelby reunite with her buzz cut head and so the guys are so confused and don't want to trust the girls and everything and then we hear Gretchen's voice and then so everybody's just kind of like something here doesn't make sense like what's going on so they go outside and they see well no first they're going around the building and all the electrical equipment is gone they cleared the place out in that short amount of time and so they're like crap dude so they go outside and they see that of course they're not on that island that they crash landed on they're on the island with the interview stuff which is completely you know different from um the other island because you know you have to get to the other island on a boat and everything remember and so now they're like crap dude we're screwed so leah just screams because she knows she's been had and so now this is going to set up season three where the guys and the girls are going to work together and can they get along because this is now phase three of the experiment and everything. Who is truly going to be superior, the girls or the guys? You know there's going to be infighting, you know they're going to swap teams, and you know there's going to be some clickety clacking going on. But here's the thing. Phase one was the girls and the boys on, separate, on, on the aisles at different times. Phase two was the interview crap. And phase three is now this. But who's going to be watching everything? Well, this is what gets us to the boys. I haven't talked about them yet. So, first let's get into Dean. Dean is the one who gave Leah that cell phone to call like somebody, right? And so Gretchen knows and she's pissed. But she now knows that since even though he betrayed her, she can't just let him, well... I don't know. She doesn't kill him. He thinks she's going to kill him, but she says she's not. She's going to reunite him with his daughter. So that part is true. But for some reason, she said that because he betrayed her, manipulated her, and overthought her, that she sees him more as an ally than that of an enemy. I don't understand how. Because he could literally go and just tell. But, you know, you have to be able to find her. So I don't understand that part. That part is just rushed writing. So they let him go. And we see on the plane, we see her assistant. I think it's Alex who got um, punched. Um, it's the psychiatrist dude. The psychiatrist dude is full on evil now. And it's totally okay with all these experiments and everything like that. And this is kind of like, he, he seemed like he had a slight redeeming heart last season, but I guess not. So, um, he literally tells her, you know, who's going to do the controlled experiments. I think her son says that. Or somebody says that. They, they want to know. And maybe it's Alex. Because um, Alex is still there for some bizarre reason. And they want to know, you know, who's going to be there to watch and monitor and stuff. Oh, by the way, those two other assistants, the Asian lady and the, 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 the manservant dude who just does whatever, like, you know, Gretchen wants. They're in this season, but brief, and they don't really serve no significance whatsoever. They could have literally just recasted anybody. So there was really no point bringing them back because what little screen time they had because of the pandemic and stuff. But on to the guys. So the guys are just hanging out, moping around. Everybody's a little sad. And then all of a sudden, like, Scotty is just doing white versus black stuff for some bizarre reason. I don't get that. Why? Why is it the two black guys on the show? Are the, are the only ones doing this whole oh white this and white that and because that would be okay and fine if we knew why they're like this but we don't know why they're like this they're just like that I, of course it's because of social issues and stuff that's going on in our world but what is exactly the the the, the reason for them it just kind of makes them look hateful in a slight way if we knew why they had such a problem with it it'll be okay so in a way, they're moping around, they're trying to get Karen to hang out and play frisbee with them, but they don't really, he don't really want to, but they all do it. They all do it until Seth comes in. He's all like, I gotta show y'all something. He shows them Alex's boat, 
And they're like, dude, how'd you find this thing? Like, must have just washed up. Oh, it has gas in it. Convenient. So they're all like, so Ken's all like, all right, let's head out to the water and try to find civilization. And they're all like, that's stupid. We don't know where we're at. You can be out in the middle of nowhere. So Seth's all like, I'll do it. And Ken's like, uh-uh, man, I don't trust you. You'll leave us here for dead. So he goes with him. But they need a, t uh, a person to keep the peace. Somebody volunteers Raphael to do it. So they go out there. I'm like, okay, well, hold up. I think I know what's going to happen. This is probably why he's in handcuffs and on the flash forward stuff. So they're all out to sea. And so Seth's all like, turn the engine off and let's just drift because we're going to run out of gas. Karen doesn't want to do it, but Raphael suggests. So then Karen gets pissed all like, man, don't you be flip flopping on me now. He's the enemy. Remember that? Then Karen and Seth get into a huge argument where they struggle, they fight, and then Seth pushes Karen over. Karen is about to drown. And Seth's like, all right, let's go. We're going to leave him to die and everything. And Raphael's like, no, man, we can't do that. He's all like, look, man, um, you know how he is temperamental. He'll try to kill us. He's trying to do that manipulation thing again. So then Karen is coming near the boat and Raphael takes up a paddle. He's all like, do it, Raph, do it. They hit him in the head and everything. So we can be done with him. So of course we know what happened. Raphael turns on Seth instead, whacks him in the head, stabs him with the um, paddle and then starts punching the crap out of him. But then Karen is the one that tells him to stop killing him because there's a boat coming towards us. And so I'm all like, maybe that's why he's in handcuffs. Maybe he's dead or something like that, right? Well, no, it turns out that in the flash forward, so in the flash forward, we see um, Seth. He's in a room with a radio, old fashioned radio, right? And so uh, he puts a CD in and it's Gretchen's voice and everything on a CD and it's on the speaker. And it's basically just like, you know, um, saying the stuff to like the kids and everything. So he's gonna be the one who spies on them, which is not safe because one, he is literally crazy. He tries to kill people and he's a sexually assaulted. And now they got girls to deal with. So, you know, he's going to be trying to mess with them. And because boys are evil, remember? Because none of the girls tried to sexually assault nobody in the first season, but the boys are just so evil. And so anyway, but then Gretchen tells Alex that she has some spies on the inside that's going to help her. She says spies with an S means multiple people. We know Seth is one, but who are the others? Now, I suspect Josh might be one of them because in or what made her so happy when she found out what happened those 15 days with Josh, how did she get him to spill the beans with candy? If she can bribe him with candy, maybe she can do more than that. So it could be him. Plus he's really pissed and vengeful and he's really evil um, in the interview stuff. So maybe he has turned. Then the next person might be Scotty. Think about it. We know he's poor. We know he lost his mansion. We know he lives in an apartment. We know he's a grifter. And we also know he is very, very, very selfish. And he has a problem with that of white people. I'm going to assume that it was probably um, like a bank or a business, something that took... Um, his home or something like that she could probably goat him and to be all like you know you help me out and get your home back and everything like that and your family won't have to be living in an apartment no more so he is a possibility now on the girl side she's talking about having a mold the camera cut to that of shelby i think shelby's a red herring because this show likes to do red herrings a lot, a lot, lot. So the obvious choice is normally not the one you think. I mean, look what happened with um, Raphael and stuff. And so like, you know, so I don't think it would be her. Um, plus also, but you know, but she does know what's kind of going on a little bit, like a little bit. It's not gonna be Leah, cause Leah literally just got had in everything. And, but it could be Fatten. Fatten figured stuff out. She's smarter than people give her um, credit for. And she didn't want to tell the other girls what she found in Nora's journal. That could be a possibility. But then you got to remember, 
Rachel. Rachel is no longer that girl she used to be from season one. Rachel is sad, depressed over the whole Nora thing and her arm. And she's also crazy in the head now. She just wants to be with Nora. If she finds out Nora is alive, then she might have turned and everything. So, yeah. Oh, also, I don't appreciate how they have the Mexican immigrant be the one who you think is like a murderer on the show. They led us to believe for eight episodes that the Mexican immigrant was a killer because he was handcuffed and something happened to one of the boys and we never saw Seth in like the flash forward stuff. And he literally beat the dude with a paddle and bloody him up to where he looked dead. And then they cut from that and then for many minutes later, we don't know what happened to stuff. We just have to assume he's dead. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's alive. And what's his name? It's not a murderer. I don't appreciate that crap. I am not at all happy with this season. This season undermined everything that season one built. All the good stuff. This season was very rushed. The writing was very sloppy and lazy. They should have focused a lot more on the boys and the boys that they didn't interview. If you really want us to like the boys, you should have gave us more than other than them being barbaric and then going into their past uh, memories and stuff only to have no gravitas for that of the future. I don't appreciate how this season um, wanted people to forgive a racist, wanted to tell a black gay dude that it's great you're black and gay, but you don't always have to be that. What the world kind of message is that? <laughs> I mean, seriously, they never once said that with the lesbian couple and everything. And then they wanted you to forgive a sexual assaulter when he assaulted a boy. But when he physically hurt a female, oh, now we have to condemn and cancel him. Who the heck is writing this crap? Seriously, who? And I'm getting kind of tired now of this spy espionage feel that this show had. It was cool. There was a cool twist knowing that this was all a setup and everything. And how is this going to play out? The second season should have played out with the girls figuring things out and them trying to escape the island and everything. Like one cause a distraction, they try to get away and then find out, oh, they didn't get away on their own. It was all still set up and then introduced the boys and stuff. And the guys should have had their own season. And, and you got to stop and think. Gretchen might have some good intentions, but she is the ultimate villain. She kidnapped teenagers for Christ's sake. Who is going to just be all like, oh, you did a great thing, Gretchen. We're going to let you get away scot-free and everything. Like, people have literally died. Who was the dude whose face got ate by a freaking shark? They almost got ate by a jaguar. Like, seriously now. I don't get that. And, you know, it, it, they really should have focused more on the guys and give them a better story. Why is Bo Dad such a neat freak and everything? Like, still don't know <laughs> and everything. How exactly did Scotty and them lose their, their, their home and what business they had before? What is the deal with Kieran and his family? Why is he such a hothead? You think, like the thing with Kieran, sometimes you think he might be gay, but then he's not. And then you think he's obnoxious and just wants to beat everybody up, but then he doesn't until he does, but then he has a good reason for doing it. And then it's like the whole coach situation and stuff. And it's kind of like, I, I just don't get the direction this season went. And I'm not the only person who feels this way. And I'm not the only man who feels this way. There are females who feel this way too and stuff. And it's just, they really ruin a lot of good potential that was squandered and wasted. And that is a shame because the first season has such great drama. You felt for the girls. The girls were flawed. But they found ways to redeem them with the guys. I don't know how they're going to get redeemed. Scotty, why should we re how he was never redeemed. He's very selfish and only thinks about himself. Um, They literally told Ivan, like, hey, man, you're just too much of yourself and everything. And, you know, you're always getting people in trouble and recording them and exposing them. But he's a, he exposed a racist coach. Now, what he did to Karen was messed up. But what I never mentioned is that 
Ivan and his boyfriend got punished for that too. Once they found what's his boyfriend, his boyfriend ratted him out and they both got in trouble. But then in the Allen stuff, Ivan is just like a jerk, a sassy little jerk who really doesn't contribute that much because he's always like, I don't want to do that and <laughs> stuff like that. And it's just like, he's not, Fatten did a whole lot more when she got redeemed and everything. And I don't know what the deal with Henry is and why he's so emo and everything and always thinking about death. He's literally like Nora, but Nora is so much cooler and everything. And I'm trying to think who else I'm leaving out. Raph, like, his whole backstory had nothing to do with what he did on the island and what he did in the Flash Forward stuff. So what was the point of his story? And Seth is unredeemable. Like, he is. He's literally the monster that this show wants men to, to be in there, I think. And I know I'm probably leaving a boy out, but I can't even think of one right now. Uh, I think I'm... Yeah, I think that's all the guys. And it's just... The guys were literally made to look stupid, and that's what they really are. They really are stupid in this season. Like, they really are. And it's just a shame. They couldn't even last as long as the girls did on the island, but yet they made everything a whole lot quicker and faster. But yet, that don't mean nothing. They still implode. They kept dividing each other. They kept flip-flopping from teams and everything. The girls never did it. The girls have always stayed a, co a cohesive unit. And even when they had infighting, they always came back and did the whole apology thing. The guys only apologize and came back when they're hungry. That's literally it. <sighs> Seriously, how do you get trapped on the island and you never even talk about, hey, anybody got a cell phone? Speaking of the parents, why has none of the parents tried to contact their kids via cell phone? Even if they're on a retreat, you know how parents are. They want to check in and stuff, especially those that are worry warts and everything. So why have they never contacted none of the kids and everything? Um, when they contact the facility, when they get like a, a dopey response, you think they will go in and investigate, but not one parent has done that yet. And I don't get that and stuff. Also, Jeanette's family. How is it they not missing her? She has not been able to contact them because she's dead. And so, like, yeah, it's like, I don't get that. Now, it would have been interesting if the parents were the third experiment. Like, they went to go look for their kids and then they got kidnapped and see how they survived. But that would have been interesting. But it's like none of the parents have tried to contact their kids. In any other show, this would have happened. Heck. The, um, what is that? What was that show I reviewed a couple of months, a month ago? The Mysterious Society of the Benedict something something or that Disney Plus Kids show? When they went to a secret facility, one of the guardians contacted that place, saw it was a ruse, and went to investigate. You know, our kids show can do that better than this show can. I'm done with this show. I'm done with this show. Like, I really am. I don't care what the heck happens in season three. I got stuck thinking like Amazon Prime again just for this thinking show and it was a huge dud and I'm just done with this show I can't take it no more like this show wasted so much good potential Mufasa did not die for this alrighty well I'll talk to y'all later bye